Well, grace and peace to you and welcome to the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is good to be together in worship, but I know you're here for lunch. It is, uh, it is good to be together. It's good to eat together, too. So uh, if you forgot about that, potato luncheon is um, after church today. Uh, we were a little concerned because apparently there was an issue at Brian's who provides the potatoes, and they are closed today. However, staff came in and are cooking us potatoes anyway. So we will have potatoes. Um, there are a lot of announcements in the bulletin. We have a couple meetings this week. If those happen to pertain to you, please be present. Um, a no youth tonight. Um, and well, there's a celebration as part of why there's no youth tonight. We'll, we'll talk about that during our time of celebration together. Um, November is looking very um, interesting. Um, a couple, cha- couple um, differences on the schedule that you need to make sure you're aware of. One, if you are on the church council, that meeting will be November 4th. That will not be at our normal third Sunday because there's a lot going on on the third Sunday and makes it uh, improbable to be able to meet. The second Sunday is Heritage Sunday, which is a terrible day to meet. So that means we're meeting the first Sunday to, so we can get that meeting in ahead of our charge conference, which is on November 17th um, here. District conference and charge conference are all here on that day, along with everybody else in the district. So it's going to be kind of a busy morning as we go through all of that. And then that evening, um, on that on the 17th, Calvary's Hill, which is a gospel group. Um, some of you may know the name Jim Simpson from being um, in a lot of events at the Colonial. He is a member of this group. They will be here in concert at 6 o'clock on the 17th as well. So um, a lot going on in November. Of course, 11th, uh, November 11th is our Heritage Sunday, and we do have um, Reverend Riley Smith coming in to be the guest speaker for that. And we do have a luncheon afterward, because it's Heritage Sunday, so don't forget that. Um, that's a big deal. Um, and it's time, uh, starting next week, uh, the Christmas play rehearsal is starting. So if you are have already been asked to be in that or would like to be in that, see Mary Harden about that play. And our Christmas cantata rehearsals have begun. If you would like to sing in the cantata without committing to being in the choir full time, then this is your perfect opportunity. Um, and that, those rehearsals are eight-ish on Wednesday evenings. Um, after the regular choir practice at 7.30. Um, great news is we had to order more books. We had so many people coming to sing in the cantata, so it's very exciting. Um, this is going to be quite a production. I think that's it. Anything I've forgotten that needs to be mentioned today? Okay, well let us prepare ourselves for our worship together.
morning. Good morning. That hasn't that set the mood for our worship this morning. Would you please join me in the call to worship and remain standing through the passing of the feast? You are the salt of the earth. You the world with faithfulness, faithfulness of God. God. You are the light of the world. May your love shine through us, O Christ our Savior. You are a city built on a hill. May your vigor make us all witnesses, O Spirit of the only living God. Would you join me in the first hymn, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, number 474, and on the screen.
Well, this is great practice, passing the peace of Christ. <laughs> Y'all have rehearsed this exceedingly well. So um, don't forget this little lesson when you leave these walls so that we can keep, can keep passing that peace of Christ to those who aren't in here with us. <laughs> Scriptures this morning is a Hebrew reading from Job, chapter 23, verses 1 through 9, and then 16 and 17. Job answered, Today my complaint is again bitter. My strength is weighed down because of my groaning. Oh, that I could know how to find him, come to his dwelling place. I would lay out my case before him, fill my mouth with arguments. Know the words with which he would answer. Understand what he would say to me. Would he contend with me through brute force? No, he would surely listen to me. There those who do the right thing can argue with him. I could escape from my judge forever. Look, I go east, he's not there. West, and don't discover him north in his activity, and I don't grasp him. He turns south, I don't see. God has weakened my mind. The Almighty has frightened me. Still, I am not annihilated by darkness. He has hidden deep darkness from me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The children here this morning who like to come spend a moment. Just you and me, kid. <laughs> Let me ask you, you ever found something really hard to do? Yeah. You ever found something impossible to do? No? Well, good for you. Um, when I was younger, I used to have dreams about flying. Not in an airplane, not, but just flying. Like floating up in the air, flying. Well, that's kind of impossible. Not something that we humans know how to do. Birds are really good at it. We're not so much, right? Um, and there's other things in our lives that we find really we cannot do. We're just not able to do it. Well, in our lesson today, um, Jesus is te has a teaching and he's talking about how, you know, with us, there are things that are impossible. And specifically, he's talking about getting to heaven. That if it's up to us, and based upon what we do, it's impossible. But 
The good news is, in God, everything's possible. And God can make all kinds of things happen. And that's really good, important for us to keep in mind. That even when we feel we can't do something, sometimes God does amazing things. And God can do things that we don't think is, are possible at all. It happens all the time, actually, if we pay attention. There are times when... Um, I'll give an example. When I was on one of our, our district meetings, we were, we were getting together, as all the pastors on the, on the district were getting together and we were having a worship service together. And as busy as pastors sometimes are, we didn't have a whole lot of time to, for people to talk about that worship. We just kind of were getting it together. And um, turns out the person in charge of music had picked a song that was going to be the theme for that day. And the person leading the worship and, and actually preaching and talk, talking about a word of scripture in that worship picked the same song. And they hadn't talked to each other. That's kind of cool. That's something that's not possible. I mean, how can that happen, right? But see, God made that happen. So we had a really neat worship that was all based upon these really great words of the same song. It was really cool. So God does things in our lives that... Um, Otherwise, they're impossible. So um, as long as we put him first, do things for him, amazing things happen. Lord, we thank you that we're given this assurance that what is not always possible with us humans is possible with you. That you can do things that we can't even imagine. Help us remember that each day and trust you that you will lead us and give us what we need and make things happen the way you want them to. Thank you for that, for that, for that word, for that hope, for that love that that shows how much you love us. Pray through Christ who teaches us things such as this in our walk towards you. Amen.
as we hear these words from the Gospel according to Mark. I cross came apart. Okay. As Jesus continued down the road, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to obtain eternal life? Jesus replied, why do you call me good? No one is good except the one God. You know the commandments. Don't commit murder. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't give false testimony. Don't cheat. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, he responded, I've kept all these things since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him carefully and loved him. He said, you are lacking one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor. Then you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. But the man was dismayed at this statement, and he went away saddened because he had many possessions. Looking around, Jesus said to his disciples, It would be very hard for the wealthy to enter God's kingdom. His words startled the disciples. So Jesus told them again, Children, it's difficult it's difficult to enter God's kingdom. It's easier for a camel to squeeze through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter God's kingdom. They were shocked even more and said to each other, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them carefully and said, It's impossible with human beings, but not with God. All things are possible for God. Peter said to him, Look, we've left everything and followed you. Jesus said, I assure you that anyone who has left house, brothers, sister, mother, father, children, or farms because of me and because of the good news will receive 100 times as much now in this life, houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and farms with harassment, and in the coming age, eternal life. But many who are first will be last. Many who are last will be first. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. This is another one of those passages that is easier not to preach about. Funny how they've been happening this year. But in this passage is yet another instance of Jesus taking a question and flipping it around and changing it. The question that was asked of Jesus by the rich man is asking, remember what he asked? What do I need to do to inherit eternal life? Isn't that a question we all want to know the answer to? Isn't that a question that most of the people outside of these walls want to know the answer to? What do I need to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus responds, 
He quotes the law, right? Basically the Ten Commandments. Do these things. And the man said, I've done those things. How many of us can actually claim that? That's a pretty bold statement, right? I haven't done anything. I haven't stolen. I haven't, I mean, all these things that are on that list. Wow, that's amazing. So the answer from Jesus is to go sell everything and give the money to the poor. Now it says the disciples were shocked. And the young man, and this man was, was distressed. And, and here's part of the mindset behind why that is such a shocking statement. In our culture, we still see it, but in, in Greek, Roman, and Hebrew cultures at the time of Jesus, there was a very strong belief that the virtuous prosper and the unvirtuous do not. So in that logic, the man approaching Jesus is one of the good ones. He's done things right. He has lived well. And he has succeeded. He's been blessed. And Jesus challenges that thought. But then again, that's not the only part of Scripture that challenges that thought process. And, and of course, we see it in our lives today that there are plenty who are unrighteous who prosper. The book of Job, one of my favorite books, is one such book that talks about how the, the flip of that whole process. If you recall, Job is declared righteous right at the beginning of the book. Blameless, even better word. And yet, massive calamity befalls him. And so last week we read a little bit out of Job in chapter 2. This week we're reading out of chapter 23. And all the stuff in the middle is wondering and griping and complaining and trying to figure out what in the world happened. And everybody that Job talks to follows the same mindset that apparently the disciples and this young, this, this rich person that comes to Jesus are following that the righteous prosper and the unrighteous don't. So if calamity befalls you, you must have done something wrong. The whole book of Job pretty much is this <laughs> this exploration of Job doesn't get it. And nobody else does either. The particular passage we have is Job actually trying to take what he would say to God if he could get an audience with God like in a court setting. Pretty bold. I want to take God to court. And this is what I'd say. Whew. Because it didn't make sense. And so Jesus, in this inter interaction with, this, with this, this rich man, twists it around again. And the man is coming to Jesus with the question of, what do I do? What's the checklist? What's the things in my life that I have to accomplish? And Jesus turns it and makes it more about what we do for others. And when we focus on ourselves, we tend to trust in our own possessions, our own wealth, our own comfort. We tend to do that more than we trust in God. Matter of fact, that's... One of the big gripes, those in the Bible study right now would recognize that sentiment because when Isaiah goes and, and is talking to the people of Judah and the rulers of Judah, he's saying exactly the same thing. A complaint against the people of Judah in the time of Isaiah, which is roughly 4,000 years ago, he is saying, y'all are so affluent, well defended, and comfortable You've forgotten to talk to God. I 
I think that's why Jesus says it's so hard for those with many possessions and wealth to enter the kingdom of God. Because it's reliance on self-made and the self. It's human-made, self-made, whatever. And that's what, the re that's what the focus is on, not on trusting God. The implication, and, and it's shocking then and just as it is now, that even honestly earned and generously shared wealth is dangerous because of the self-reliance that it can easily cause. That's where the focus of the day comes in. See, in Jesus' metric, it's impossible for someone to enter the kingdom of God relying on themselves. There is nothing, nothing that we can do to make sure that happens. There's nothing we can buy. There's nothing we can save. There's nothing that we can give away that assures us of salvation. God's standards are virtually impossible. I'll say no, they are impossible to live up to. None of us are perfect. And so this is the frustration of the disciples. You can almost hear it in their voice. So, how can anyone be saved? And who can be saved then? I mean, that's a cry in angst from the disciples. It seems that nothing one does is enough. Good news is, what is impossible for us is possible for God. Salvation and life in God's kingdom is about God, not us. It is God's kingdom after all. God's kingdom that God made for us, not our kingdom that we let God be part of. Hear the difference? <laughs> so our presence in God's kingdom is completely dependent upon God. Because it's God's to begin with. Jesus loves this man that comes to him. It says that in the text. There's no indication that Jesus sees the man as evil. In fact, just the opposite. He's lived his life well and honestly and with integrity and prospered. And you notice Jesus doesn't focus on some sin, something he's done wrong. Jesus doesn't point out something that, that is a problem. He doesn't say, go and sin no more like he does to so many that he helped. Instead, he focuses on a weakness. A weakness that is preventing that man from being fully and freely faithful. I heard a story about two paintings that were hanging in a man's house. One of them was a figure out of another one of the parables of the rich man whose crops produced so abundantly that he decided to pull down his barns and build bigger ones. And he said to his soul, eat, drink, and have a great time for tomorrow you die. Caption under this painting said, The failure that looks like success. The other painting, right next to it, was Jesus dying on the cross. A crown of thorns pressed down on his head, his chin drooping to his chest, nails through his hands, and all his friends in hiding, nowhere to be seen. The caption under that picture says, The success that looked like failure. We'd all like to be successful and fulfilled as persons. It's one of the dreams which, which we are in, driven into us since the day we're born in our culture. But when we listen to Jesus, we realize that success and fulfillment don't often come the way that we expect them to. 
They aren't the direct, direct results of anything we do or anything that we need to attain them. Instead, they're a gift from God. It happen when we're doing the right things in our lives and with our lives. God's eyes is a whole lot better to be a success that looks like a failure than a failure that looks like a success. This is tough teaching. It really is. But the root of this is where is our focus? Is our focus on God? And where God sends us? What God asks us to do? Which at times, frankly, upsets our our picture of comfort, our picture of security. Or is our focus on what we do for ourselves? Good question. That's a hard one and a deep one. I think is why that young ruler had so much angst. The young ruler, that's the other that's the other gospel lesson. Yeah, the, the rich man. There we go. I think for his disciples, Jesus is, is giving a different picture, and that can translate to us today that Jesus holds out this hope that with God's help, change and the first steps towards the kingdom of God are not only possible. They've already begun in each one of us. Those roots that grow into something more significant, those changes that we have to allow in our hearts to, to follow Him more closely, those have begun. And it's God's impossible power and love that save us. That's worth celebrating. That's worth sharing. That's worth proclaiming with everything we can, whether it's what we write, whether it's what we sing, whether it's what we say, but it also shows in everything we do for others around us. But what can we do to assure our salvation and our place in the kingdom of God? Nothing. But with God, it's possible. Let Him guide us, direct us, change us, and watch the impossible happen. to see the prayers that are before us. Many of you are already aware of this, but we do need to add one to this list for sure. Um, Brenda Child was um, injured in a, what turn, turn, ended up being a, a water rescue um, yesterday. Uh, she has been transferred to MCV, uh, where she is undergoing treatment for her injury sustained in that rescue. And we have many of our neighbors and friends around us who still do not have power, maybe some of you still. Uh, so we need to pray for those for safety and encouragement in this difficult, uh, difficult time for many. Are there others we need to lift up today?
Bill and Barbara. Mecklenburg County School Board. Mecklenburg County School Board. Jonathan Merrill. Jonathan Merrill. People in the Gulf. People in the Gulf, and they were in the path of the storm that inconvenienced us, but caused damage there for sure. Jones family. Any celebrations today? I know there's one, which is why the youth aren't having a uh, meeting this evening. Is uh, Some of the youth and several of the adults involved in our current youth are going to be at a wedding for Jeremy, our former youth wizard. Um, and uh, that, that wedding is this afternoon down in the Henderson area. So um, that is a celebration. I want to wish my partner in crime, Tenor partner in crime up here, a happy birthday today, Mickey Moore. Happy birthday to Mickey. Sun escapes serious, uh, serious damage, but escaped injury. Yes, that can be very scary when a big tree goes down in your yard. Others. Thank you. This from Michael Vaughn, who's the one who pulled Brenda out of the car. Yes, thank you. Well, let us, let us pray. Lord, you have brought us together today. It is a good thing to be together. But we're mindful of those that are on the list in front of us and those that we've, we've mentioned aloud. Those who may be experiencing difficulty or grief or injury or illness. Those who have anxiety about their future. Those who may have big travel ahead or just any one of the large number of things that can be distressful and difficult in life. We ask that you comfort and provide guidance and strength to each one of these lives. Because they are all real lives that mean something to us. Help us. Help us as well to be your people even better than we do today. Help us to share you with those around us. Help us be excited about what you do in our lives. Help us try and always put you first as the first and most important trust we have. Not easy. The world trusts so many other things. But help us help each other do that. That we can be your people. That we can support each other. That we can let you lead us wherever it is. You would have us go. 
All this we pray. And all these lives we bring to you through Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I know we have a, there's a phrase that says confession is good for the soul, and it is. So let us take a moment to pray together. O oh God, source of all that makes life possible, giver of all that makes life good, we gather to give you our thanks. Yet we confess that we have often failed to live our thankfulness. What we have, we take for granted, and we grumble about what we lack. We have squandered your bounty with little thought of those who will come after us. We are more troubled by the few who have more than by the many who have less. Forgive us, O God. In this hour of worship, accept our thanksgiving and teach us to make gratitude and sharing our way of life through the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us continue our celebration of who God is um, by the receiving of God's tithes and our offering, as well as the receiving of the children's offering, which I will need some assistance to receiving this morning. generous God and have entrusted so much to each one of us. All our skills, all our gifts, all our abilities, all of our, all of our comfort even comes as a gift from you. Help us continue to acknowledge that in our lives and help us ever, ever more willing to share it. Thank you. Give us the ability to do your work. Help us strengthen that love and passion each and every day. All this we give through Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught his disciples and us a prayer, a prayer that goes, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and release not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. him and follow him each day. For those of us who are eating downstairs uh, with us in a moment, we ask that that blessing continues to the food that is before us in a few moments. Thank you for those who have labored to bring it here. Thank you for those who have been with it since the day it sprouted in the ground. Help it nourish us that we may be, be able to be more like you in our hearts today. Amen. Go now in peace, go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere.
Ava, please don't play with the microphones. Those are carefully adjusted every week, and I have to keep redoing it for some reason. Now I know why.